Okay, so let's talk about CSS specificity. I have here at the top of my file a chart showing how specificity works. Now, these columns right here indicate different types of selectors. Here is an example of a type selector or a tag selector, and this has a ranking, and the ranking determines how the browser is going to implement those styles. This has, right here, a tag or a type style. So it would get a one in this column right here, just like this one here. With the class P, or sorry, with the tag P, this would get a ranking of one. If you've got something that is a pseudo element, it would also count as one. When you have attribute selectors, pseudo classes, or classes, it would be a one in this column. And you add one for each one of the pseudo classes or attributes or classes that you have. Here's an example that has two classes. Now, whether they're stuck together and it's on the same element or they're just two parts of the same, doesn't really matter. It still counts as two. So this selector altogether has no IDs, two classes, and no tags. So it's like you can think of it as a a software version number where each number to the left gets higher and higher ranking so this number is more important than this one which is more important than this one which is more important than this one and so on now if I come in here and let's do a couple of examples so I'm gonna say paragraphs that are first of type we're gonna set the color to gold okay that targets this first paragraph right here and if we were to rank the scoring of this specificity, we're going to, or this selector, its specificity ranking, it's got one tag and one pseudo class. So it would get a one in this column and a one in this column, just like this one right here. Here we have an anchor with an attribute selector. Together, it gets a one in each of those two columns. Now coming on to another one, let's say that we're going to Have the color red. Now here we're saying we want to apply the color red to all paragraphs inside the element main. So this is two tags like this. But even though this is written first, because it had something in the second column, the classes, pseudo classes, and attributes, it's like this one is the number 20 or 11, and this one is the number 2. So 2 gets applied first then the 11. If we turn this into a class and a tag, now these both have the same ranking. They both have one in the class column and one in the tag column. One in the class column, one in the tag column. So they have equal specificity, and if that's the case, and they're both talking about the same element, so they're both talking about the paragraphs, they're gonna style this one, they're gonna style this one. So we're looking at this first one right here, both styles are applying to here. They're targeting the same element. They've got the same ranking with specificity. So what happens? Now we have to fall back on in what order are they written? If I was to take this and put it afterwards, because they were the same ranking, this one wins out. All right, let's put it back here. Other ways that we can do this with attribute selectors. Our main element here has a lang attribute, so we could add that. Again, now we have two tags, one attribute, so two in here and one over here would give us the number 12 or 1.2. So it wins out and the red is applied here. Okay, so that's tags and classes. IDs, if we were to add an ID to something, if I come in here and I say, Rebecca, uh, the color is going to be Rebecca purple. There we go. Now, it's got the lowest ranking here It's of these three. It's not going to work. But if we add the ID home, now this has a ranking with a one in this column. So one, zero, one would it be its ranking. That means it's higher. That means it's higher than all these. So it gets applied last. It wins out. Now, ways of changing this, we can 
go to the inline style. That's the next column. That's more important. So down inside my HTML, here's an inline style. If I was to come in here and say the color is, let's say light green. There we go. That changed it. That worked because the inline styles are even more important than the IDs. So every time you add one more number here, it's the leftmost column that wins out. This column right here, this isn't technically part of specificity, but it works with specificity. This will override things. If I put this after any single pair of uh, property and value for the styles, like here, the gold, if I was to come in here after the word gold before the semicolon and I add exclamation mark important, it changes it. This now, it's like putting a one in a column that's in front of everything else. Even the inline styles get overridden by this. So any style that you want to do, we just have to add up the totals. So we could say, okay, I want home and or rather body inside body. There is an aside inside that. We have a UL inside that. There's an LI inside that. There's an anchor tag. So we've gone from body to a side to UL to LI to A. This gives us a very long chain. There's five tags here, but it's still just the number five. If I were to uh, do text decoration, let's make this overline. So it's going to change the line here from the bottom to the top of these. There we are. So the the line now written on the top of all three links. Even with this long chain, it's still only worth the value of five. If we did home A, there's two elements. Copy that. And let's do the line through. There. Even though we've got all of these selectors here, they're still only worth a total of five. Here, we've got an ID, which is our column here. So it's like 101. Well, 101 is higher than five. So it will be applied after. Even if I put this right up at the top as the very first style, it's going to win out because it has the IDs. And that is CSS specificity. It's not any more complicated than that. It's just understanding that everything has a weighted value. So as you add things together, main.main, .main, that would have a value of 0 for important, 0 for inline, 0 for IDs, 1 for class, and 1 for tag. If we did say h1 oh, got to end that comment if we said h1 and the ID main title now there's two ways that we can write this one is main title just like that another way we can write this is ID equals main title these two are pointing to the same thing ID and class, they're just attributes that we're adding in here. So we can use the attribute selector to target them. This would work the same way as this one. The difference between these two is their ranking with the specificity. So we have zero important, zero in line, one ID, zero classes, one tag. And for this next one, we have zero important, zero in line, zero IDs, one attribute selector, and one tag. So comparing these two, we have 101 versus 11. And I'm a little hesitant to say that this is 101, this is 11, because you can have any number in each of these columns. It's more like software versioning. I could have the number 100 here. There could be 100 class selectors inside of your selector that you create, and it's still ranking based on the columns. The leftmost highest number wins out. 
All right, so I hope that explains what specificity is and what it does. Um, it does take a little bit of practice to get used to it and understand in all situations, but remember that you can always come in here. If you go into the inspector inside of the, uh, the browser, inside of Chrome, we come down here to the styles. Let's say we'll go to the paragraph, first paragraph inside of there, and we can see what's happening. So at the top here, HTML, body, home, main, paragraph. This is the one we're looking at. We also see all the four colors here. If I go back to my CSS. So this color, light green, is being overridden. That's what the slash through it means. Color Rebecca purple is being overridden. Color red is being overridden. And this is the one that's being applied. It doesn't have the slash through it. It's got the important here. That's the thing that's making this win out. So main with an attribute with a tag, two tags, one attribute. So 12, ID and this, ID and the tag, 101. The element style, the inline, that's like saying 1000. So this one is going to override this one. It's going to override this one because it's a much higher number, but the important overrides all of that. So you can always look at your CSS. If you inspect the elements, do a right click, go to inspect for any element anywhere in your HTML. You can look at the CSS and you can see exactly how the browser is applying it, what's being overridden. So remember, you can use that as a tool to help you learn and understand specificity. Okay, great. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will leave this as a code gist for you in the description so you can download it and play with it if you want. And as always, thanks for watching.